my name's Kevin, and I'm coming to you from Magoosh. We're doing another GMAT Tuesday video. And today we're gonna to go through one of the questions in uh, the GMAT Magoosh product. Someone on our blog actually asked a question about this data sufficiency question, and I thought it was an excellent question. So we're gonna go through it. First, let me uh, just kind of detail what's here, and then we'll talk about the student's question. So the question says, B owns how many more CDs than Al owns? How many more CDs? Okay, great. So we have two statements here. Statement number one says if Bay gives nine of her CDs to Al, then Al will own twice as many CDs as Bay owns. And then our second piece of information, our second statement, says if Bay B, excuse me, gives one CD to Al, then Al and B will have an equal number of CDs. So um, let me just read the student's questions, I have notes, and then we can talk more about the question. So the student wrote in and said, well, both statement one and two give us two variable equations, which is great to notice. Um, we're dealing with two people here, um, B and Al, and that's going to give us two equations that have two variables. And the student says, how is it that B is the correct answer and not C? Shouldn't you need both pieces of information, this equation and this equation, to answer the problem? Which kind of makes sense if you think about it, because if you have two variables, you always need two equations to know what those values are. But that is actually the trap in this question, is they want, the GMAT people want you to think that, assume, oh, I'm going to need this statement and this statement to solve the problem, so I'm just going to choose answer C without doing any work and move on very quickly so I can answer more questions and save time. Well, you just fell for one of their traps and they do this um, and they're tricky about it so you have to do at least a little bit of work to make sure that it's actually C. You don't want to just willy-nilly be choosing answer choices. So um, let's see why this is true, and that it's actually not answer choice C, but actually it, the answer is B. Um, so the first thing we can do is look at the question again. We want to know, um, B owns how many more CDs than Al owns? So we can actually make a formula of that. So we're trying to figure out B is B, <laughs> and then A will be Al. So we're going to subtract Al CDs from B CDs and C, what's left. That's our goal. So with the first statement, we can see if B gives nine of her CDs to Al, well, let's just do that first part. So B gives nine CDs. So that means B just lost nine of her CDs. And Al gained nine CDs. That's excellent. And then Al will own twice as many CDs as B owns. OK, so now what we can do is form an equation. So it says Al will own twice as many CDs as B. So that means we'd have to multiply B by 2 in order for it to equal what Al has. So then, really, let me just erase this here and put it right here. And then we have A plus 9. So we can work this problem a little bit. We get 2B minus 18 equals A plus 9. And then let's move our 18 over here and over here. So then we have 2b equals a plus 27. We can go minus a. And then we have 2b minus a equals 27. And so at this point, there's not much more that we can do. We would need a second equation here um, to help solve this problem. So actually, statement 1 doesn't help us. But when we go over to statement 2, we'll find that it actually does help. So this says if B gives one CT to Al, okay, let's just do that first part. B gives one CD to Al. So that means B just lost a CD, and Al is gaining a CD. And then Al and B will have equal number of CDs. Then there will be equal. Okay, great. So you might think, oh, this is similar to this, so I'm going to need both of these to solve the problem. But again, like I said, you actually can solve it with just this information because we can form that on one side of our equation. So if we go plus 1, plus 1, B equals A plus 2, 
minus a minus a, we get b minus a equals 2. Now we know what the difference is. We know how many more CDs b has than l. So statement 2 is all that we need. So remember that the GMAT is out to trap you and trick you. Don't just rush into choosing an answer. Make sure you do a little bit of work to justify the answer choice that you are choosing. Well, uh, be excellent to the universe. I will be here every Tuesday to help you with any sort of GMAT-related information.